Hello everyone, it's the Upform team over here, and today we're going to show you guys how you can start better using your Qualtrics Farms. Specifically, we're going to go over the look and feel customization options that Qualtrics provides on all of their free form plans. Now, using the look and feel menu, you can basically customize many of the aesthetic aspects of your survey. So this really refers to most of the appearance, since as many of you guys might know, if you don't typically change the format or looks of your survey. Qualtrics set it up to a pretty basic white background type of look. So today we're here to show you guys how you can start making it and maybe spicing it up a bit so that it might start attracting more of your respondents to basically answering your form. Or maybe just even keep it consistent with your theme or your business. Okay, so first things first, let's just open one of our forms. We're going to go with customer feedback for cafe. Okay, so here we just have a generic form up. Here, I'm just going to remove this photo really quick since we don't need that over there. Let's also remove this just for consistency. Okay, so as you can see, this is what the generic edit page looks like for a form but what we're really interested in is this is this little menu on the left hand side with little symbols this is should be on the up on the leftmost side so if you go to the end of the screen even past the edit managers page you'll see these symbols of a checklist which if you have your mouse overs builder we also have a survey flow and here's what we're looking for the look and feel so let's just click this Now this is where you can really start messing around with theme layout, the general style, motion, the logo, background, and maybe even just restoring the defaults. So if you were to just go with the dynamic themes that are already provided by Qualtrics, you don't really have to do much editing in regards to, let's say, everything below theme. So let's just click this. You can see what Mountain Valleys looks like. And as you can see, the colors of the buttons change, the colors of the options change. We get a little bit of a background image. You can also look at Glacier Mountains. Same thing happens, so the background changes, the buttons change, the colors change. And while these themes are already pretty convenient, as you can see, we aren't really given a lot of options. We only have four in this case. So if you want to get more specific with your style, you're going to have to mess around with each individual aspect of your form. So let's just head back to black so you can see what it looks like. If we start changing things, and we're going to head over to layout this time. So through layout, you can kind of choose how your questions are presented or organized in the view of the respondent. So right now, all of them is set to classic with each question kind of being encapsulated by this little square rectangular block. If you were to choose a different one, like simple, and just hit OK, or flat, since simple doesn't seem to work for us, just go with flat then. As you can see, the font and the layout immediately changes. Everything looks a little bit wider, a little bit cleaner actually, and the squares and rectangles are a lot more emphasized in this case. So that's just how it works for layout. We're going to stick with this layout for now, and then we're going to head over to general. Now on the general tab, here's where you can kind of start messing around with the buttons. So here our buttons are set to arrows. So the next button, instead of actually saying next, you just set it to arrows. But if you want to change that arrow into a next, and you can change it to previous if you look at the next and previous button, they change accordingly. But also if you don't like that, you can always change it back to your arrows. I typically like to kind of keep it to arrows or symbols just in case I end up translating my form so that you don't have to actually change the buttons as well as the rest of the questions and the choices. You can also choose the progress bar options, though for this I typically don't really change a lot, but if you want to do it, there is an option to add text without text. Maybe I'll just add it without text so that you can see where you are on the test while you're kind of going through it. You can also choose how many questions there are per page. You can also choose a header and a footer. So let's go into the more interesting stuff. We're going to head over to style because we want to start messing around with the colors. So here you can change the primary color. Let's say we don't want blue anymore. We're going to go with this little salmon color. 
And if you want to change a secondary color, maybe you want to change it into orange, not just salmon. So now if you were to look at your questions, the certain aspects of your slider bar question will be salmon, let's see which, and your buttons will now be orange, but for most of the choices in the questions themselves, they will stick to the primary color, whereas the secondary color mostly refers to secondary aspects like the buttons. You can also change the font, though in this case, because we set it to the flat layout, we can't actually mess around with it. You can also mess around with question spacing, question text, answer text. You can also add custom CSS. If you know how to code that in manually, you can add it all here. You can also change, mess around with motion. So if you guys might know how transitions work, they basically add a little bit of animation or oomph to your little form. So if you were to get this in, if we were to do slide, if we were to hit the next button, it slides to the left instead of just being like, let's see, let's revert this. Or no, sorry, let's go back to page one. Okay, we set it back to none. So now if you were to hit next, there shouldn't be any sort of animation when it goes to the next page. So for this, I'm just gonna keep it to maybe slide because I personally like the slide animation. Next, we're gonna go into logo. Now this is where you can start adding a logo image. Let's say you're part of your company or an organization. This is where you can start adding it. You can even have it in a certain style, placement, max height, and mobile scaling. Because obviously, if you look at the mobile version of this, it is always going to be different than the desktop. Lastly, we have the background option where you can either set a color or a foreground contrast and question container. In this case, because we set the layout to flat, let's see, we set it back to classic. Maybe it'll allow us to add that background. Okay, it looks like it doesn't. This might be a paid feature, but worst case, if you don't need a background, you could honestly ignore this. I find that the other features are a lot more useful when it comes to increasing respondent interaction. And that's all I really have to say about this. Hopefully this helps you better manage any data collection you might be doing. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you need any more help when it comes to call tricks, be sure to check out the rest of our channel using either the link on the upper right corner of this video or any of the links below. See you next time.